Hello everyone and a massive welcome from me. I'm Sam Rathling, your host for today. So it's great to see you all here. Thank you for being on time for those of you that are nice and early. Um, looking forward to today's session. I know we've got people logging in from all over the world. So why don't we start by saying hello to each other. The chat box is now open for you to say hello and where you're dialing in from. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing where you all are. Let's have a look and make sure that you can all chat. Let's have a look. Let me see if I can get everybody talking. Hello, everyone. There we go. Julie, you're first in. Hi, Julie from East Yorkshire. There we go. So just I'm going to be interacting in the chat box quite a lot today. So feel free to use that. Hello, Lisa. Good morning. Derbyshire down the road from me. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm going to get started in about one minute. So just while we're waiting for everybody to join from all over the world, um, please uh, use the chat box to say hello. I'm looking forward to today's session. We're going to talk about everything to do with LinkedIn, social selling, and of course, Sales Navigator. That's going to be the big focus for today. And I'm sure you're all here to learn how you can build pipeline for 2023 and beyond. Hi, Graham. Welcome. Nadine, welcome. Emma, hello, everybody. Huntsville, wow, Alabama, amazing. So I know we've got, I know, Aaron, you said you're going to be on like super early. It's like 6.30 in the morning for you. So well done for getting up and being the early bird who always catches the worm, by the way. Morning, Victoria. Hello, Jamie. Amazing. Ashby de la Zouche, down the road from me. And we've got Danish from India. Nice to see you, Dinesh. Amazing. Stockholm, Sweden. I love LinkedIn. Like, how amazing is this that everybody just comes from all over the world and joins in a session like this? So I'm going to just start sharing my slides. So give me a big thumbs up and a yes in the chat box if you can see my slides on screen. Hopefully you can. Perfect. Now, there's going to be a few things for today. I won't be answering questions as we go through. I'll be doing questions right at the end. So if you do have questions, you should be able to see a little Q&A box in your webinar settings at the bottom of the screen. So if you do have a specific question that you want answering, please use the Q&A box. I won't be seeing things like hands going up and things like that. Feel free to interact in the chat box during the session. I will be getting you to interact and do certain things. So we'll be chatting to each other and interacting all the way through. Um, there we go. Let me just check everything's good. Welcome, Glasgow. Hi, Louise. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right, I'm going to switch the chat box now back to you being able to chat with me, not everybody, because I don't want people spamming you and, you know, sending sales pictures into the, into the chat box there. So let's get started. I'm Sam Rattling. I'm your host for today. We're going to talk about how to leverage LinkedIn and Sales Navigator specifically to build your sales pipeline. You're going to need three things to get the best from my session. You're going to need first access to your smartphone, which I'm sure is somewhere close by you. Ideally, you want access to LinkedIn. So on a device, a mobile app, an iPad um, or your desktop, if you want to access it there. And of course, pen and paper for those of you who have seen me speak before. I pack a lot of content and value into these sessions. So you're gonna take tons of notes. Um, you can see it's being recorded. So if you did register for today and you want to watch it back, um, we will be getting the replay out to you on the email that you registered with today. So I'll give you a second to get all that stuff together. Right then, let's get started. So I've got three aims for this workshop. The first one is just to give you as much advice, tips, guidance and help as I can in all things related to LinkedIn, social selling and sales navigator. That's job number one. Number two, I'm going, I will be giving you an opportunity to learn at the end about our Sales Navigator Masterclass offering. And number three is to answer every question you've got. So stay on right to the end for the live Q&A. And as I say, use that Q&A box for me um, so that you can answer, get your questions answered as we go through. So why on earth have I decided to run this workshop? Well, over the years, I've worked with a lot of companies, right? I started teaching LinkedIn back in 2010. This is the first time I ever stepped on stage to talk about the power of LinkedIn for businesses. It was the first time I'd ever been asked to speak about anything to do with how I'd grown my own businesses. And back then I was in Ireland, I was running a recruitment company and someone said, can you share how you've grown your recruitment company? Um, obviously being in recruitment, I got very early adopted into LinkedIn. Um, so it's something that's been kind of on my radar pretty much since LinkedIn began. I was probably one of the first 100,000 users of LinkedIn. Then I started using it for business development from 2005. So I'm talking about 17 years of prospecting business development, like I've been doing it for many, many years. 
back then, I think there was maybe five people in the UK that were talking about LinkedIn as a business tool. Obviously, there's a lot more now. But over the years, the reason I've decided to run this workshop from talking to hundreds of business owners, thousands of experts, and also corporate sales teams, these are just some of the companies that I've worked with over the years, I'm just very frustrated because I hear from salespeople all the time and they say, it's not fair. I've been given this license. I've been given access to Sales Navigator, but no one's ever shown me how to do it. And it's just not their fault. I just get very frustrated. So today is to help the sales professionals, the sales leaders that are trying to lead teams um, that are, you know, have been given Sales Navigator. Or if you're just Sales Nav curious, maybe you don't have it yet and you're wanting to find out what it's all about. But for me, it's a doubt of real frustration that nobody is showing people how to use this tool properly for building pipeline. So that's why I've decided to run this workshop. Now, there are five big mistakes that I see happening, having spent years and years and years talking to businesses and sales professionals about how to get good at LinkedIn and social selling. There are five big mistakes that make people um, fail ultimately and give up. So I'm going to go through five common mistakes and these are the big reasons why people fail. And you might resonate with some of them. So first mistake, number one, is having a sales navigator license and doing nothing with it. Now, the amount of companies I go into, and they've invested thousands, like hundreds of thousands of pounds of LinkedIn. They've bought everybody a sales navigator license, thinking that magically everyone's going to suddenly start producing leads. But ultimately, people don't do anything with it because they don't know how or they haven't got time or they think that it's going to be something that's going to be ineffective for them. So having a license and doing nothing with it is very, very common. People are generally using maybe 10 to 20 percent of sales navigators full capacity when I start working with them. So it's important that you realize that that is a big thing that makes people fail just doing nothing with it like any tool. Right. Second mistake is wasting lots of time on the wrong things, which is very inefficient. So I see lots of salespeople and business owners and they are prospecting, they are sending messages, they are um, putting out content, they're reposting company page, et cetera, whatever they're doing, but they're wasting time doing the wrong things because they just don't know that they're doing the wrong things. They don't know what is the right thing to do. So a lot of time can get wasted. In fact, I see sometimes people saying, oh, my sales team is spending hours and hours and hours in LinkedIn, but they're just not getting results. You don't have to spend hours in LinkedIn in order to get results, but it's a common reason why people fail. Mistake number three is sending messages, in-mails and outreach and getting little or no response. Now, this is a really, really common reason why people fail, because people are trying, like they are pushing out messages, they are trying to connect with prospects, but they're doing it in a way that is just repelling them. So they're getting little or no response because of the way that they're approaching. And we'll talk about that a bit later on. Mistake number four is looking and acting like a salesperson, not a trusted expert. What you want to be is a trusted brand ambassador. You want to be out there representing your business, representing your brand um, in the right way, but not looking and acting like a salesperson. And I see it all the time. People going, oh, yeah, I'm prospecting and I'm not getting business. Well, maybe it's because your profile is completely set up to make you look like a salesperson. Therefore, every prospect that you're approaching just thinks you're just going to try and pitch them something and completely doesn't connect with you. And the final thing is just not having a system. Um, a system that gives consistency to pipeline. When you have a system and you know what to do every day and every week and every month to get results, then it becomes easy. But most people just don't have a system. They have a hope and pray um, methodology to their activity or they just don't do anything at all. So it's about getting a system in place that's easy to implement in a very uh, time efficient manner. So I'm sure some of you would have been nodding heads on some of these things that I've said, but I'd like to actually find out which of these resonates with you the most. So I'm going to run a poll. I'm going to put it up on screen and it has the five big mistakes. And I'm going to ask you which of them resonates with you. And if it is all of them, there is the option all of the above. Um, I'm also going to ask you kind of what fits with you in terms of your position, um, why you're here, et cetera, and whether or not you currently have sales navigators. So there are three questions to answer. So I'll give you about 30 seconds to go through that. So let's have a look. Which of the five big mistakes resonate with you? I'll give you a few um, seconds to just do that. 
Um, we've got quite a common one coming through here is the um, sending in mails and outreach and getting little or no response seems to be our winner by a mile at the moment. So let's have a look. Let's see, we've got 65% of you have answered so far. Okay, great. I'll just leave it open for another 10 seconds and then I shall end the poll. So it looks like um, majority of you, in fact, the winner here is actually that you don't have a system for consistently building pipeline. So 54% of you don't have a system, 41% uh, sending in mails or outreach not getting response. And a few of you have said like all of the above. Um, okay, great. So perfect. I'm going to close that poll down now. You can just see that. There we go. So you can, guys can see the answers from the rest of the screen. Okay, good. Right then. So um, hopefully that has closed and gone now. There we go. Right. So three three parts I'm going to give you in this workshop. So we're going to we know what the mistakes are. We know where people are failing. I'm now going to give you an overview of the three elements I'm going to share with you in today's session. So part number one is about positioning. This is about setting yourself up for success, building an effective profile and creating a personal brand. So this is going to be to do with your profile and your content and how you position yourself to get business on the platform. The second thing is prospecting, which I'm glad to see was one of your biggest challenges because a large chunk of today is gonna to be on the prospecting side of things. So how do we leverage Sales Navigator and all of its tools available to you to approach and target your ideal clients in the right way? That's a really important part. And finally, pipeline, of course, that's why we're all here. How do you have that social selling system that consistently feeds your pipeline with new qualified leads? So positioning, prospecting and pipeline, we're going to tackle them one at a time. So before we do that, for those of you that have not met me before, I know we've got quite a few um, existing people that I already know, but I've got quite a few new people on the line. I am Sam Rattling. I'm a globally recognized social selling authority at Yahoo Finance, named me a top uh, LinkedIn expert globally. I'm an international speaker and best-selling author. LinkedIn and Sales Navigator experts. So Sales Nav is my thing. There's a lot of LinkedIn coaches and, and LinkedIn experts out there. In fact, there's hundreds of them, but majority of them don't pay for LinkedIn premium and don't pay for Sales Navigator. I don't specialize in that as a, as a topic. So it's something I've used for years and it's something I'm very passionate about. I am the CRO, so Chief Revenue Officer at Pipeline 44 Group. So that means that I walk the talk, like I have a sales bell. On my desk, I'm responsible for revenue. I'm responsible for bringing in sales. So I don't just um, teach this stuff. I do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything I'm going to share with you, prospecting, engaging, posting, like having a system, doing the daily, weekly, and monthly habits, like I do them in my day-to-day -day job. So I'm not just teaching it. I'm actually doing it with you as well. And the one that I do care about is results. And our business, Pipeline 44, has helped our clients generate over 164 million pounds through the system that we teach um, our clients. So I'm very proud of that number, but I am trying to get to a billion. So type yes in the chat box for me if you'd like to help me get to our target of a billion, which is by me helping you to win lots of business on LinkedIn. Type yes if you'd like to be a big part of that mission. Okay, brilliant. I love it. Great. So do me a favor, if you do get business off the back of something I share on here, like drop me a message and let me know that you've won a, won a piece of business or you've landed a piece of a new client or something from something I shared because it's uh, it's going up every month, obviously. My other big hat that I wear besides doing all of that is being a mum to Oscar, Maya and Liliana. They're my three beautiful children. I'm a single parent, so life is uh, very busy and very fun and uh, everything I do is for them. So big shout out to all the parents, carers, step parents, anyone trying to build a business or run a full time job whilst doing it with kids. Big shout out to you guys. Now, if we aren't connected already on LinkedIn, this is the time to do that. So that's why you'll need your phone. So if you grab your phone and point the camera um, at the screen, you'll be able to just connect to my LinkedIn profile. Feel free to mention that we met through the webinar. Um, I will get back to everybody. My inbox can be a little bit busy, but I will get back to everybody that messages me or sends me a message. If you've got specific questions after today, feel free to drop me a message on LinkedIn as well um, if we don't get to them all at the end of the session. So connect with me. You can hit follow. If you do want to see my content, you can also hit the bell on my profile. There's a little bell underneath the header image uh, that will give you notifications every time I post. I'm always sharing useful, valuable stuff about LinkedIn and social selling. OK, good. So why would we even want to get good at LinkedIn? Why would we want to master Sales Navigator? 
and why would we bother with social selling? Well, there's quite a few reasons and I'm going to share with you some of them. But before we talk about that, let's even kind of get just get close to a definition of what this thing called social selling is, um, because it's a buzzword. Lots of people use it. I just don't think people really truly understand what social selling is. So my definition of social selling is this. It's about building relationships, creating brand awareness and staying top of mind with your prospects and customers. So when they are ready to buy, they think of you first. The problem with prospecting and outreach and people sending messages is if people don't respond, they think that's that's where it stops. But let's face it, 98 percent of people that you message today are not in the buying window for what you sell. So social selling is about, yes, it's about building relationships, but once you've got those new connections and once you've built those relationships, it's about nurturing them. And that's nurturing through content, nurturing through being very visible on the newsfeed, being credible and increasing how many touch points that person has with you and your brand over the course of time. So social selling doesn't happen instantly. It does take a bit of time to build your personal brand. It does take a bit of time to build your network. But once you've got there, then you start to get both inbound leads and outbound leads happening off the back of it. So just bear in mind that everything you're doing is about keeping top of mind with those prospects and customers. Now, in terms of um, what social selling isn't, it isn't this. Now, this is the inbox of the CEO of Pipeline 44, Nicholas Jones. So this was from this week, right? So you can see there his first inbound um, like bombardment was at 2.53 a.m. And by 10.30, before he even had his first cup of coffee in the morning, he'd had 11 inbound approaches of people trying to sell him something. This is not what social selling is. Spamming, pitching, bad messaging is not the way to get business. So let me get you into a secret. Prospecting is getting hard, a fact, because decision makers inboxes look like this on a daily basis. Nick's inbox gets 50, 50 inbound approaches every single day of people trying to sell him something. It's so bad. He's even got a video that he just pings back to people to thank them for their message. And obviously, you know, majority of the time they're trying to sell him something he even has as one of his businesses. So majority of time people are not um, doing it correctly. But there are a few things that you need to understand. Prospect is getting harder. Fact. People are getting bombarded. Fact. You can see it all the time. Type yes if you've had a bad sales pitch in your inbox in the last seven days. Let's see how many of you have had a bad sales pitch in your inbox in the last seven days. Yep. Majority of you are like, yes, 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 yes. Right. This is the reality. Since the pandemic, everybody's gone, oh, I'm going to get business on LinkedIn. And they're just Bad, bad, bad pitching. Yeah, exactly. Lisa's saying she's a VA and VAs are trying to sell her their services. So that a lot of automation tools, a lot of AI, a lot of people just not getting the fact that social selling is not that. Um, so this is why you need to get good because you need to cut through all that noise. That's why you need to get good. The buying landscape has changed. Buyers are a lot more savvy now. It's no longer good enough just to send out a bunch of messages and hope that somebody responds. Like that is not how this works. Um, so it really, really is a struggle. Yeah, someone's saying they're getting through the social media noise is key and it definitely is a struggle. So that's why I wanted to put on today's workshop, because there is still a way to do it. There is ways to get business. There are ways to use these tools to do it. But majority of people don't understand it and think that social selling is just that. Now, the good news is that LinkedIn has some tools to help you be able to measure how good you are at this thing called social selling. So we're going to talk first about the social selling index. OK, so the social selling index is a score out of 100 points. You all have a score. And in a moment, I'm going to get you all to go have a look at your own score. So I'm going to put a link in the chat box. Some of you that have seen me speak before will know the link already. Um, this is a score out of 100 points. I'm going to talk you through it in just a second. And I'm going to also share with you in just a moment, because I'm getting a few questions, um, what a good score is. OK, so let's have a look at what your score is, first of all. So if you go to the link I've popped in the chat box there, it's linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI. And I'd love you to share it in the chat box. So I'm going to switch the chat box back to everyone for a second, just so that you guys can see various um, scores. Good, good, good. Quite a few in the 70s, which is great. So it means that 70s means you guys are active, right? You're doing some of the right things. Your behaviors are, are good, right? So 70s is not a bad score. 
Um, but don't worry if your score is low because it's actually much easier to move the needle if you're in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. But majority of people who are using Sales Navigator or active on LinkedIn, majority of you will be somewhere probably between 50 and 70. Um, but let's get your scores through. I'll switch it back here. Okay, good. So let's talk about the components that make up your score. So there are four different colors, equally weighted 25 points. So the orange score is all to do with your professional brand. So what does that mean? Profile and content. This is part one of the workshop, positioning. So your positioning, how you come across, what kind of content you put out, how your profile is set up, how effective your content in your profile are is all to do with the orange score. So if you, if you want to be seen as a go-to trusted expert in your field, um, professional brand is the one that you want to really get good at. The purple score for the majority of you that are like prospecting, uh, you're in sales positions, you know, that kind of thing. The prospecting one or the network building one is the purple score there underneath, right? So you can probably get up to about 80 without Sales Navigator, but if you do have Sales Navigator and you're using some of the tools I'm going to share with you today, you'll find that that score will, will move above the kind of 15 to 20 mark. Um, but prospecting and building network is the purple score. The green score is all to do with engagement, but also to do with things like insights. So if you're using Sales Navigator to find information about companies and use the insights tool in there, if you are interacting in groups, if you're engaging on the newsfeed, if you're engaging with other people's content and using engagement as a visibility tool, then you'll be doing well on the green score. And finally, the last one is all about building trust building relationships and building trust. So making sure that you don't have any negative reports with LinkedIn. The last thing you want is people reporting you for you know, sending them spam or sending them stuff in the inbox. That would be the things that would affect your blue score. So typically most people have a high blue score um, and depending on your profile, your content and your prospecting activities and engagement will determine the others. So uh, what someone asked me in the chat box just now, like what is a decent score? So ideally the magic happens at 75 plus. So quite a few of you are actually not too far away from that magic kind of 75 plus. At 70, you get an instant 25% uplift in visibility on your content. So if you're like, I'm not getting as many impressions or I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting many eyeballs on my content, your SSI score is directly impacting how much visibility your content is getting. So 70 plus is this is kind of a good score. 75 plus, if I take every salesperson I've worked with, every business owner that's doing well with LinkedIn, majority of them have an SSI between 75 and 85. So that would be kind of um, kind of there. Now, it is possible because I've just had someone say, well, I've got 80 and I'm not getting any magic, right? It is very likely that somebody that is in the kind of high 70s, 80s, who's not getting business from LinkedIn, there'll be a few fundamental other things that need to get tweaked. So for example, you can have an SSI score of 80, but your profile might suck. Okay, that might that's not aimed at you, by the way, whoever said that in the chat box. So it might be that your profile is shocking and your profile reads like an online CV and doesn't actually convert people into being a customer. You might be posting content, but it might be terrible content that no one cares about, no one engages with. So from an algorithm perspective on the SSI score, you're doing the right things, but actually the, the way that you're going about things is not necessarily correct. So there could be some tweaks that need to get done. It shouldn't be too much if you're in the 80s already, but there'll be a few tweaks that need to happen in order for you to do that. You can't see other people's um, SSI scores um, publicly, but if you are in a team enterprise edition of um, Sales Navigator, there'll be a leaderboard in your company and you'll be able to see where you sit in the leaderboard um, of other people's um, SSI scores. So I've been working with a, a, a girl, you'll hear from her at the end, um, and she's just gone from being nowhere on the social selling board to now out of 511, she's now in the top 10 in her company of social sellers um, about six weeks after we've um, kind of gone through training, et cetera. So um, yeah, so that's, so you're welcome. I'm getting some uh, questions in the chat box. So if you're over 75 and you're not still got not getting leads, it'll be something else, but um, it won't take long to get you there. So let's talk about this whole positioning piece, right? So take the orange one, Profile and content, that's pretty much what positioning is all about. So it's all about credibility building and visibility building. When you've got visibility and credibility on the newsfeed, then you're going to lead yourself to opportunities. Um, a lot of what I'm going to share with you is going to be helping you to create that credibility and to build that visibility up. 
So first part of this is all to do with your LinkedIn profile. So what is an effective LinkedIn profile? What are the most important things to remember? Because I see this all the time with salespeople. They're going, yeah, I'm doing prospecting and you know, I'm sending messages and I'm doing outreach and I'm not getting any response. And then I look at their profile. I'm like, well, there's lots of reasons why they're not going to be responding to you. So let's take a look at LinkedIn profiles. So I'm not going to cover everything. There are 20 elements of a LinkedIn profile, um, but I will talk about some of them. So first off is like obviously things like having a strong professional headshot, having a nice branded header image. So if you're working for a larger organization, you should find that marketing have got some decent kind of branded header images for you. Um, but the one I do want to talk about, especially with salespeople and sales professionals and sales leaders, is this bit that comes underneath your name. So if you have currently job title at company name and it has anything to do with sales, account management, business development, et cetera, you're instantly repelling prospects because the first thing that people see when they connect with you or when you're inviting them to connect is you see the job title and the bit that's underneath your name. And everywhere you go on LinkedIn, that headline follows you around. So if your profile is screaming that you're in sales and you're trying to prospect people, you're going to be missing out on potential opportunities. Um, another thing that people do incorrectly with their profile is they don't set it up to be a customer centric converting thing, right? So your featured section should be allowing people to have more touch points with you. So I take people off to my YouTube channel. Um, I allow people to go and learn more information about different things. I have lots of helpful articles on my profile, for example, that just increase the amount of time and the amount of dwell time that people are spending with my brand. And that is one of the things that you need to do within LinkedIn. So your content is every single piece of content is a touch point. All of these things on your profile are just compelling people to want to spend more time with your brand. The longer they spend with your brand, the longer dwell time they have with you, the more chance they're going to convert at the other end. And they're going to have that mindset shift in terms of moving them from not knowing who you are to actually moving them to being a customer. So here are some of the types of headlines I typically see from salespeople. In fact, these have been taken from a lot of the people who registered for today's webinar. So you might see your own job title up there or your own professional headline up there. But if you've got name and then one of these underneath it, that's going to be um, giving you a disadvantage because if you're prospecting and connecting with prospects and it says regional sales manager or enterprise account director or director of business development, whatever it is, the instant um, thing that's going to happen is you're going to repel those potential prospects. So your headline, your professional headline, the bit that's under your name, you have 220 characters and that should be talking about the pain points that you solve for your clients and have the keywords in it that you want to get found for, not be job title at company name. So little fix for any of you that are on the line that are um, on LinkedIn with a professional headline that does that. Now, it's not your fault. LinkedIn automatically will take your job title and put it in there as a professional headline. It's your job to then go in and change that, obviously, if you want to uh, make it sound better to prospects. Now, here are the about sections that uh, I see all the time. Again, these are not taken from people on the call, thankfully. But if you go and read the about section of most salespeople's profiles, it's all about them. I've had this much years experience. I'm very driven. I'm target oriented. I'm amazing. But nobody cares. Your prospects do not care. Unless you are out there hunting for a new job, you do not want your about section to be about you. Okay, You want your about section to be about your client. You want it to be about your prospect. You want it to be designed to absolutely help move, move that prospect from visiting your profile to wanting to actually have a conversation with you. So take a hard look at your LinkedIn about section. Is it an online CV or are you actually delivering value to your prospects in that profile section, in that about section? So think about how you're coming across. Imagine your ideal client was looking at your profile right now like you're on this webinar with me your profile's networking for you 24 7 it's your digital ambassador to the world I got an inbound lead this morning at 4 a.m from a client in the other side of America like in California I got an inbound message from someone who'd been looking at my profile and wanted to inquire about some corporate training so your LinkedIn profile is doing that job for you if your about section reads well if it doesn't then it's not going to help you get business now, when you sell, you repel. If you and your sales team look and act like a salesperson on LinkedIn, you've already lost. 
So for those of you saying, well, my SSI score is in the 70s, like have a look at your profile. Are you really doing everything you can to educate and add value to your prospects? Or do you look like a sales professional when you are reading your profile? So take a hard look. And if you're a sales leader, I know we've got some sales leaders here as well. Take a look at your team, like have a look at their profiles, go through their profiles. Are they online CVs? Are they just waiting to be headhunted? Or are they customer centric conversion tools that have got the right things on there to help your prospects move forward? So there's a few things that for me make up an effective LinkedIn profile. I'm going to share with you what they are. The first of it's got to speak to your ideal client. Imagine that your ideal client is reading it. What do they need to see? What do they need to hear? What information do they need on your profile? Secondly, think about the problems and pain points that you solve for your clients. That needs to be in your profile as well, because it's important that they understand that you know them. Like, show me that you know me through your profile. Building credibility as an individual, but also for your business as well. So if you're an employee of a larger organization, you need to make sure your profile is, is creating credibility for you, but also for the business that you represent. Very keyword searchable profiles, they get you found in search results. And of course, you want your profile to compel visitors to take action. Are you using the lead generation um, link that you can have in your profile now to move people to your email list to convert them later down the line? Are you um, allowing people to book a call with you? I get probably three to five meetings a week directly from my LinkedIn profile without ever speaking to people because my profile compels visitors to take action. And the last part around positioning is all to do with your personal brand. Like even if you're working for a larger business or a larger global brand or a corporate brand or a scale up brand, whatever it is that you represent, or whether you have your own business, each of you is your own personal brand. Now, personal brand is made up of two things. First off, how you see yourself. And secondly, how others see you. And right in the middle there becomes your personal brand. So you've got to think about your personal brand from those perspectives. Like, how do you want to show up? How do you want to come across in the newsfeed? What kind of content and, and voice and tone of voice do you want to come across? Because how you see yourself and how others see you is largely to do with your personal values. The unfortunate thing is that most, most companies simply get their sales team to repost all the boring material that they put out on their company page, which is quite frankly, not going to do you any, any a service. And as a salesperson, it's not going to put commission into your bank account. Ultimately, yes, it's OK to share the odd thing on the company page. But if you're not owning your own personal brand, then you're not driving prospects towards you within that corporate brand. So your personal brand and how you build it and why you build it is super important. So why would you even bother building a personal brand? Well, number one, at the end of the day, you become much more trustworthy and personable to your potential prospects. They will get to know you on the newsfeed if you're posting both personal and business posts. You'll bring authenticity to your organization's brand. So yes, people might know the large brand that you represent, but ultimately, you're, if you be your authentic self and show up on the newsfeed re with real intent to be authentic, then you're bringing authenticity to your company's brand too. People buy people at the end of the day, so you will raise the value of working with you. Stand out from the crowd, like your competition are rubbish at social selling. <laughs> your competition are terrible at social selling. Most people are, right? So if you want to elevate your brand and elevate your um, positioning in the, in the marketplace, you definitely want to be raising your personal brand. You can also then position yourself as an expert in your field. Like all of you have amazing knowledge. You've probably worked in your industry for years. But do your prospects see you as a trusted expert or do they see you as someone just trying to sell them something? So you want to make sure that you're coming across in the right way through your personal brand. When you build your personal brand, you become highly valuable to your organization. You become somebody that like partners, suppliers, experts, people around the world start to recognize and take notice. So you're more likely to get career progression if you have a very strong personal brand in the organization. You become valuable. But most importantly, why would you want to build a personal brand? More leads, more business, and ultimately more commission in your bank account. So I'm going to talk through some of the kind of content themes that I think are really, really good for salespeople. Um, there are 20 of them. I haven't got time to share 20. I'm going to share you just four. I think it's four anyway, um, four of these. So the first one of these is educational, right? So the types of posts that are really good for salespeople to generate leads are educational posts. 
to think about all the knowledge and expertise that you have, what could you share on the newsfeed that would help educate your potential prospects? Now, I do things like this very regularly. So I do kind of document posts, for example, 15 ways to build pipeline, eight ways to build your network, 14 different types of posts on LinkedIn. These are document posts. They're really, really good for, um, for sharing educational posts. So what could you do in terms of your network and your connections and your industry? What could you do to educate your prospects? You can never give away too much stuff, in my opinion. So give, give, give. Don't go and get, get, get. So the people that go to LinkedIn to give and add value are the ones that do well. The people that go to get and get and hunt are the people that don't do well on LinkedIn. So you want to be seen as a valuable, trusted expert, and you're going to do that through content. A really easy one for you as salespeople and business owners is documentary posts. So a really um, good exercise for you to do. I'm going to give you my seven day hack for great content. So grab your phone and have a look at your diary or your calendar for the last um, seven days. I want you to go to your calendar and look back over the last week. I'm going to do the same thing. And have a look back at every personal appointment and every um, work appointment you've had in the last seven days and pick something out that you could post about. Because ultimately, documentary posts are simply sharing what you've been up to. So I'm going to do a post today. Um, it's going to be a personal post, but it's going to link to business. So last night I went to my very first escape rooms um, experience and it was fabulous. Like I had the best time. I'm a Rotarian. I do a lot of work for the community. And um, so I'm a member of Rotary International. And I went out with all of our, my new Rotary colleagues last night to an escape room. So I'm going to do a whole post today about the escape rooms experience. Um, I felt like I was in the crystal maze or something it was awesome. So I'm going to do a post today, but it's a personal thing in my diary, but it's going to also link to business because I learned a lot of things last night about communication and leadership and teamwork and how people's brains work. It was amazing. So think about one event over the last week that's personal or business that you could create a documentary post about. Now, that event and every event in your diary, in fact, has three posts. It has a before, a during and an after. So think about something you've got coming up next week. You could do a forward looking post. I'm really looking forward to something coming up in the next seven days. When you do that thing, you could do a documentary post talking about what that thing is that you're doing. And then after the event, you can post about the feedback or you can post about something that happened after the event. So a documentary post is dead easy for everyone, whether you're in business, whether you're a salesperson, whether you're in marketing, doesn't matter. But ultimately, um, this is um, a really easy thing to do. OK, now I can see a lot of questions coming into the chat box. I'd like you to put those into the Q&A box if possible, because I will be doing questions at the end and I will be going through all the questions so I can see them all coming through. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, so if you have questions, pop them in the Q&A. Another type of post is a social proof post. So I'm going to share some social proof just now just to demonstrate what it is. But from a sales perspective, you'll get leads from social proof posts. So this is Andy Gallimore and um, Andy posted on LinkedIn. Um, it was a while ago, but he did a picture of happy bunnies and fluffy, uh, happy bunnies and unhappy bunnies in the workplace because he's a culture expert. So that might not translate to every language that's on here, but happy bunnies are people that are loving their job and unhappy bunnies are the ones that don't like their job. So he landed an inbound lead um, the same day as posting this uh, for a £10,000 project because he talked about a social proof of a, a, a win that he'd had for a client. So he'd helped a hospital go from like the 40th worst in the country to the first best hospital in the country. Um, and off the back of it, he won a, an inbound lead off the back of it. So this is where social proof can then turn into inbound inquiries. So if you're not using social proof to get inbound leads, you're missing an opportunity. Uh, another one would be wins and successes. So here's an example. Chris Taylor, our chief marketing officer, posted this just last week, um, talking about one of our clients landing £36,000 worth of business in less than 90 minutes giving exactly what we did, how we work with them, et cetera. This is a win and success post. So it's not a win and success for us, although it is, it's a win and success for one of our clients. So it's kind of combining social proof with a win and success activity as well. So are you leveraging the news feed to share wins and successes of your clients? So in some cases you can talk about the client, in other cases you can't, but either way share the story because that will help you win business. 
And um, what you've learned, another one from Chris, uh, five lessons for being active on LinkedIn. Um, take note of number five, pets are secret weapons, use them, right? So, <laughs> and you'll notice that he posted a picture of his mom with his dog. So it's important that you are sharing lessons along the way, but these are different types of things you can do to improve your personal brand, position you in the right way and do all of those things. Now, positioning can change everything. So for you, those of you that are like, well, I've got an SSI of 80 or I'm already doing 75, but I'm not getting business. It can change everything, right? So I'm going to share the story of Matt Fletcher. Now, Matt Fletcher, if you're not following Matt on LinkedIn, is a legend when it comes to social selling. Uh, Matt's based in the UK, runs a, an engineering business. Now, Matt came to me in April 2020 looking for help. So Matt came onto one of my masterclasses. Um, he then at the time, so let me go back a little bit. At the time, Matt had been on LinkedIn since 2013. Um, he was doing a bit on LinkedIn, but he was, he was, I think he had an SSI score quite high. I think it was like 80 or 81. So he was one of those people that was like an active social seller, but it just wasn't translating into consistent business. So I um, helped him out. We came on one of my courses. It was right at the start of lockdown uh, back in April 2020, I think it was. Um, and he, off the back of that, realized that he wasn't being consistent with his content. So he had a personal brand, but he wasn't being consistent with his personal brand. This was the post that changed everything for Matt. So he found his voice. He went on a bit of a rant. This post um, ended up at 129,000 views. Now, he sent me an email a month later to, to tell me what had happened off the back of him shifting his positioning um, and actually going to a point where he had gone from like not being consistent to actually posting on a consistent basis. He committed to posting at least once a day on the weekdays. Now you can see here, this is what happened off the back of that post. Over 8,000 profile views hit. Uh, people came to his profile, so his brand exploded. Um, and you can see here, he got in May, just like a month after he trained with me, he took on 18 new customers and all of them came through LinkedIn. Now take note of something he says here. Since the pandemic hit, I've worked to post something each weekday. Some haven't even been that good, right? So he committed to being consistent, but not every single post was perfect, but he committed to the consistency. So that's when things started to happen. A year later, um, I so this is my favorite Bruce Lee quote, um, long-term consistency trumps short-term intensity. That was the big thing that Matt took away from working with me. Um, but in terms of what happened a year later, I got this email a year later from Matt, um, just landed a £1.2 million pound contract. And they said, we've seen you on LinkedIn. It was an inbound lead that happened off the back of the work that he'd done in building his brand. Now, Matt came back to me last year and I was like, wow, Matt, how are you doing? And he said, look, I, I actually am getting tons of inbound leads, but I'm not getting enough outbound and I'm not using Sales Navigator to the max. So I'm just going to play a little video um, of Matt sharing. I actually asked him to share with the group that he was training with last year um, his story. So I want you to hear it in his own words. When I started LinkedIn 2013, I was just posting a few things and getting connections. Didn't really know what I was doing on there. And then went on one of Sam's courses, I think three or four day masterclass, and just really gave me the information and knowledge of what to do and what to post. So my company is traditional business to business selling. Well, we sell um, engineering services for factories and automation houses and projects and car factories, things like that. So when something breaks down, they call us. And I tried to share it's selling without selling, which Sam will go on about. And it's just information of why things fail, what happens in engineering. And since then, I've gathered around about 30,000 followers, a lot of contacts, and directly attributable, I tried to add it up, Sam, it's about 2.6 million at the moment. And I would say it's really accounting for about 10 to 15% of our sales by just putting stories on LinkedIn. So that is Matt's story. And I know it goes up like every quarter. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, you know, if, if, if you're thinking like, well, I've got a personal brand, I'm posting content, but it's not turning into business. Like that's the positioning piece that you need to get right. When I um, stop, it's. Um, so 2.6 million today. I need to catch up with him in the next couple of weeks and find out where it's at now. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's crossed the three million pound mark already. So that's positioning. So give me an emoji in the chat box if you found that helpful so far. Right. Give me an emoji in the chat box. Emoji of choice. Anything. I love it when I see all the different emojis coming through. Have you found it helpful? Let's see what emojis you're going to choose. OK, good. I love it. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Aaron. You're still awake, Aaron. It's very early in the morning for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, good. I'm glad that you guys are finding it helpful. So let's move on to part two. This is prospecting. So this is the bit that you guys are all looking for. So um, there are seven features of sales nav that you could leverage for prospecting. I don't have time to go through all of them, but I am going to mention what they are. So you've got advanced search, um, accounts and leads. You've got saving leads out and list building capabilities. So you can find personas. Um, you've got in-mails to be able to reach out to prospects. You've got the news feed in Sales Navigator, which is totally different to the LinkedIn news feed. You've then got account mapping. I don't, I can't believe how few people are using um, account mapping to help them expand accounts and to win new business. Smart links are the hidden gold of Sales Navigator. And of course, insights, which I mentioned earlier. So those are the seven features of Sales Navigator. But rather than kind of like boringly go through all of them, I just wanted to link them um, to the different aspects. So link them to prospecting and link them to pipeline. So I'm going to talk about some of them over the course of the next few slides. So for those of you that have not seen Sales Navigator before, I know a few of you at the beginning said, I don't even have it yet. I'm just on here because I'm curious. This is what it looks like. So you have your own Sales Navigator newsfeed, which doesn't have an algorithm, by the way. This newsfeed literally is just full of alerts and posts created by the people that you're wanting to prospect. So if all you do is save out lots of leads uh, with people that are in your ideal client network and target market, you'll start to see what they're posting and, and that can help you, definitely. You've then got um, different things across the top there, priority accounts, all sorts of things. So that's what it looks like. It's very different from the normal LinkedIn environment. Now, there are two types of people when it comes to LinkedIn, and they are the hunters, the cheaters, the people that we've already talked about that just bombard people's inboxes. What I'd much rather you guys were was a social selling spider. So if you have arachnophobia, look away from the screen now. But what I want you to do is think about prospecting in terms of building a network of ideal clients and having this um, all these connections around you and then using social selling, using your positioning and using the, all the things I've talked about in the previous session to then attract those people towards you. So you will get business from outbound and you will start conversations from outbound, but you will also drive inbound inquiries if you position yourself in the right way. You've got to build the network of people for the inbound to happen. The problem is most people are not proactively building their networks and that's where prospecting kind of really starts to kick in. So building your network consistently. So this is you get up to 100 invites a week from LinkedIn to be able to build your network with the right types of people. Um, and on Sales Navigator in the searches in the advanced searches for people, which is leads on LinkedIn, you have 29 different search fields. So you can see them on the uh, right hand side there. You've got 29 different search fields that you can use in order for you to <clears throat> find the top right kind of ideal client. So thinking about your ideal client, thinking about like what job title do you want them to have? What kind of seniority level? Oh, whoops, sorry. And uh, what kind of seniority level do you want them to have? Like um, what level of connection uh, do you want to be prospecting at? And I recommend second degree connections should be where you're prospecting. But where do you want them? You know, what kind of industry are they in? What kind of job titles do you want to talk to? So you can use all of these search fields in Sales Navigator to find your ideal client. So I would do something like that on the left hand side. I work with a lot of scale up tech businesses. So I quite like to talk to heads of sales, chief sales officers, CROs, etc. Uh, but I do like people that are involved in things like sales enablement and are responsible for revenue. So here's an example of me using those search um, criteria on the left hand side, but then finding 253 results where people also have sales enablement and revenue on their profile. So this is my exact ideal client. I can put all those people into a list, save them out, and now I can start to work through and prospect them. When I'm looking for companies, which in LinkedIn are called accounts, there are 15 search fields available to you for account searches. So you can go through, you can click on the plus and say, well, what industry do you want? Um, you know, do you want them to have a specific type of technology? For example, a lot of people don't realize you can do that. So if it's important to you that they currently use Salesforce, for example, or they currently use Sage or whatever it is that you can actually use that as a field to find companies with specific technologies. Um, you might find that it's important for the headcount or the growth. Like I look for companies which have a growing sales force. So I might say, well, I want show me companies with a sales um, growth of 10 to 60 percent or 10 to 100 percent. So these are things you can do in the account searches to help you find your ideal client and prospect more effectively. So here you can see another example on account searches, uh, one to 50 million, more than uh, uh, 500, more than 200 staff. 
But I also look for companies that have had maybe recent funding investments. So let's say they're a scale up tech business. Well, I want companies that have got budget to be able to work with me, obviously. So I look for um, ones that say have had funding events in the last 12 months. So I know they've had investment. So these and it is just another example of how you can use those account searches. But it's phenomenal when you are really kind of when you really understand how to use the searches, how you can then turn that into really efficient time spent when you're prospecting. Then you can save those out and you can create lists so you can save everything to a list. You can't do that in a normal LinkedIn and it allows you to basically create different lists for different things. So here's a list I've created for senior sales, CSOs and CTOs in my second degree network. Um, and then you can see here I've got lots and lots of different lists. So I, I do this on a regular basis. Now, LinkedIn will system generate some for you as well. So you can see here there's new executives in my saved accounts. There's recently accepted connections and email so I can go in and see. So you can see I'm doing this on a regular basis and then I'm getting recommended leads as well from Sales Navigator. But once you're set up properly, you're going to get an ongoing stream of prospects who match your searches. So you can see here, these are my lead searches that I've set up. Now, these lead searches I set up last year, a lot of them. But you can see that this one here, like second degree sales leaders with sales enablement in their profile, the one I showed you earlier. There's 385 new results in that search since the 20, uh, since um, October last year. So I've, even though I did the search once, because my network has grown, I've put more and more people in it because I'm prospecting, more and more people come into your network who are a match for what you're looking for. So once you are set up properly, it's amazing what can happen in terms of the efficiency and the reduced time spent for prospecting. So list building is a core activity that can be carried out every month to set you and your team up for success. Um, it's important that you're able to do that. Um, connections and in-mails. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of in-mails. LinkedIn knows this about me. In fact, I have LinkedIn on my current course at the moment. Um, I have one of the enterprise account managers um, in my six-week course at the moment. She knows I'm not a fan of in-mails, and I told her that beforehand. I was going to tell everyone I'm not a big fan of in-mails. The reason being that in-mails scream, I'm trying to sell you something. They do have their place. I, I kind of go through it in the training about what they can be used for, but um, you're much better off using a different connection method rather than in-mail because they do scream, I'm trying to sell you something. Now, when it comes to prospecting messages and outreach and how you can do that, I do believe that it is possible to start and build a relationship through two messages on LinkedIn. So first message, second message. But you do need to be doing that on a very focused campaign basis. Now, we teach seven different types of prospecting campaigns. I don't have time to go through all of them. But there are ways to message without bombarding and with, with actually driving a response. And that's the key thing. The first message objective is one thing only, to get them to accept you into their network. So message one, the invite, is has got one job only, and that's to get someone to say, yes, I'll accept you. If you're not getting a kind of 40 to 60% response rate on your connection request, you are missing an opportunity. Something is going wrong if you're not getting 40 to 60% acceptance. The key to success when it comes to prospecting is hyper-personalization. So this is about really kind of tailoring your invitation message to the person that you're targeting. So there are lots of things that Sales Navigator gives you when you are looking at someone's profile. So if I take Ashley here, I can see what they do, where they're based, et cetera. I can see how we know each other. I can, sorry, my mouse is very sensitive today, obviously. I'll leave that over there. So uh, you can see that I can I can look at their things they're interested in. I can see um, who they who they know. I can see their recent posts. I can see everything about that person through Sales Navigator. And I'm able then to construct a message that's personalized to that person. So you might have, uh, I mean, I teach 20 different personalization points, but one could be maybe we studied at the same university, or maybe we have a common interest in a particular charity, or maybe we have um, so, uh, studies in, in common, maybe we studied the same subject. So there's lots of different ways you can personalize. Once you've got the connection, though, you need to be thinking about what's your next message. Now, message two is usually based on a specific campaign. So um, we could it could be inviting them to an event. It could be uh, uh, offering them something that's high perceived value. There's lots of different things that you can do, but the next conversation starter needs to be driving at least a three to six percent response rate. Again, if you're not doing a three to six percent response rate when you're doing a second message, then there's something wrong in the outreach. This is not about pitching, spamming, selling or making the message all about you. This is about having a specific way to reach out to those people that actually drives a response. So think about this, right? My favorite Walt Disney quote, observe the masses and do the opposite. 
you saw Nick's inbox at the start of the session, right? You saw he'd had 11 prospecting messages before 10.30 in the morning, right? Everybody is doing the same thing. So if you are trying to cut through the noise, you need to do the opposite. You need to do things differently and cut through the noise and do it differently. But prospecting the right way can change everything. So you heard Matt's story earlier. Now I'm gonna introduce you to Torben. Now Torben is a, an enterprise sales rep at Brother. Um, I've done a lot of work with Brother over the years. We've worked together for almost four years. Um, I've trained 180 salespeople in their organization from channel sales to end user team. They have a very long sales cycle, kind of 18 to 24 month sales cycle. Now, Torben was the reluctant social seller. We had Matt, who was like an active social seller already, just needed to move up a next level. Torben, however, was very, very reluctant. So when I met Torben, um, I was in his offices in Denmark um, at the Nordics head office. We did this big tour all over Europe for Brother. They sent me off on a plane all around Europe over two, two weeks. And my first stop was the Nordics team. And I run a personality profile through LinkedIn on everybody that I train. And I knew that Torben was going to be my skeptical one because my personality profiling tool that I teach in my masterclasses had showed me he was going to be the skeptic. So it was no surprise when I got in the room, he was like this, arms folded, like I don't want to be here. Um, he was very traditional and set in his ways. He had never done anything on LinkedIn. He just didn't believe that LinkedIn was going to work. And he came in with this like hard nosed I mean, he knows I say this about him. So um, he came in with this, like, I don't think this is going to work. It's not going to happen. Like, it doesn't work. His other big thing was he didn't want to contact people that he didn't know. So type yes for me if you're a bit scared to contact people that you don't know. So you're like, I don't like doing this cold outreach thing. Like, it's just a bit awkward. Like, I don't want to go to people that I don't know. So he was a little bit scared to do that. Um, he wasn't posting anything. So if you take the positioning conversation we had earlier right he wasn't building his brand he wasn't posting on the newsfeed he wasn't even posting like the boring stuff on the company page like he was doing nothing on LinkedIn and of course because he was doing nothing he had never generated any opportunities from LinkedIn so that's where Torben was when we first met now during the training over the two days I was with him I do ask the delegates that I work with to actually you know take the theory and practice. So I said, look, everybody in the class, I want you to, in the next like 15 minutes, prospect 10 people uh, that you've saved into your list. So he was like, well, I'm not doing that. And I was like, okay, why are you going to do that? It's just 10 people, Torben. Um, and he literally refused to send these messages out. So after a little bit of a chat, I said, you know, look, come on, what's the worst thing that can happen? It's only 10 people. And he said, right, okay, I'll do it. But he did it to prove me wrong, right? He, he, he went specifically after companies that he's been trying to get into for years, right? He just said, fine, I'll do it. So he did it, but he went after the companies he'd been trying to get into forever. Um, what happened was two hours later, he sent his 10 messages, I only got to do 10 each, just in a, a few minutes, 10 each. And two hours later, six people that he had not known um, had replied back to him and two of them had even started a conversation with him and he was like oh this LinkedIn thing's cool because he got after companies that he'd been trying to get on the phone and trying to do in traditional prospecting and he just couldn't get hold of people so suddenly he went from being a skeptic to going oh maybe this LinkedIn thing isn't too bad so I've asked you know Torben what were his biggest learnings you know he said people are genuinely interested in connecting with you when you reach out to them in a polite and professional manner Using personalized connection requests helps to improve, improve connection rates. So now, obviously, he does reach out to people he doesn't know, but he does personalize his connections as I trained him to do. And um, from a content and network perspective, he used to get kind of 50 to 250 max impressions per post. Now he's regularly getting thousands of impressions on his posts. Um, and obviously he's built his network as well. He's still not got a huge network, but you don't need a huge network if you're doing enterprise selling and you'll be very targeted of the types of logos that you want to acquire. Now, here are some of his kind of more work related posts that he's done, but obviously he does also post other things as well, personal posts. Now, Torben was never going to be someone I thought would adopt some of the things that I teach in terms of cutting through the noise. But one of the things that I share with salespeople is how to cut through the noise is through things like video messaging and voice messaging. So I'm going to get Torben to share what happened when he recently used a video message um, to prospect. Just wanted to let you know that the uh, video I sent out uh, a couple of weeks ago has just resulted in a meeting booked with a large uh, chain of restaurants here in Denmark. So uh, the stuff works. Take care. 
Bye-bye. This stuff works. In fact, when he posted this in the LinkedIn group that I used to support this team, he said video messaging rocks. Now, this is the guy that was never, ever even going to send a text message, uh, like a direct message to someone he didn't know. And now it's just what he's um, doing that. You'll see now as well, he also posts um, personal posts as well. So personal and business posts, this is someone that was never on the newsfeed before. So it's important that you understand that anybody can do this, right? If Torben can do it, any of you can do it. He says, today I've opened up over 25 enterprise sales opportunities from LinkedIn. So these are big deals that take 18, 24 months to convert. His biggest win, though, was securing IKEA as a new client, which was a key logo for Brother in the Nordics. Um, he would never have secured that without working with um, social selling and, of course, myself. Um, but I'm super excited and super happy to have been able to help him. So the last section we're going to talk about is pipeline, which I know is on the top of everybody's tongue at the moment. And in fact, when most of you were asked at the beginning, what do you want the most help with? It was about systems and habits and getting a system in place for that consistent pipeline. So that's what we're going to focus on last. So prospecting is important for filling pipeline. But it's also important for you to understand how to use some of the tools in Sales Navigator, like account mapping, for example. So if we're trying to get into a large organization, I mean, I do this all the time. I'm working with large companies. You've got a network wide in the organization. So you've got a network across multiple different divisions. But you've also got a network deep. So you've got a network at different um, levels of buyer. So yes, you want the C-suite. Yes, you want decision makers and budget holders. But you also need to influence other people in the company, especially if you're selling to larger organizations. So you need to network deep. But you also need to network up. And I find a lot of salespeople prospect at their comfort zone and business owners, to be fair. Um, so you need to be able to network up, network wide and network deep. And some of the tools that are available to you in Sales Navigator are things like account mapping. Now, I, um, I truly believe that LinkedIn is not just for new business development. In fact, um, that, that kind of acronym on screen there stands for CARE. So CARE means the K is all about using Sales Navigator to keep your existing customers. So you don't want to lose your existing customers. You want to keep them. Sales Navigator and tools in Sales Navigator will help you to do that. The A is about attaining new, new clients, acquisition. So it's important that you are using it for acquisition, but it also can help you recapture accounts that you've lost and most importantly, expand the existing accounts that you've got. So you've got keep, acquire, recapture, and expand. And all these things can be done through tools like account mapping. So when you think about um, how you build lists, I build lists specifically in line with that care approach. So keep, attain, expand, and recapture. So I have all my accounts set up in the way that I want them to be done. But then I use account maps to be able to help me to be able to go network wide, deep, and also upwards. So here's an example of an account map for a client that I've already worked with. Um, as soon as I get a new lead, I do an account map. So as soon as I get an inbound lead, or as soon as I get an inquiry, or I approach somebody and I get an opportunity to speak to them, the first thing I'm doing with an organization is creating my account map. So here in this particular situation, um, it was actually, she's over here, you can't see her, but Julie on the right there, she messaged me off the back of a post I did and said, we need a system, we don't have a system. I did a post about having system and, and things in place for social selling. So she messaged me and then introduced me to Dan and Dan, the chief commercial officer and chief revenue officer. Now, I only met three people in the company, but I'd already account mapped myself about 20 different people in the organization because I knew that the CEO would be involved in the decision. I knew that the other founders would be involved in the decision. I knew that marketing, Warren was gonna be involved. I knew that Nicola was gonna have some influence. I knew that the sales team I was gonna um, be training needed to be in my account map as well. So when you get a new opportunity, account mapping is a really good tool to be able to see who else in the organization should you be speaking to. Whether you're looking to get new business, whether you're looking to expand an existing account, whatever it is, account mapping is really, really useful for that. Another thing that helps you build pipeline when it comes to Sales Navigator is smart links. Now, these are only available on the advanced and a team version of um, Sales Navigator. If you have the core version, you won't see smart links, but they are hidden gold. I absolutely love smart links. They help you to understand who's lurking in the background and viewing your content. They are the biggest set of hot leads that you can generate in, in, uh, from, from a pipeline perspective. I use them for sending sales proposals to know if my sales proposals have been read. So I did a quote last week for a new client or a new prospect, sorry, they're not a client yet, but they will be. Had a meeting on Friday. Um, I told him I was going to send his proposal in a smart link because obviously I'm going to teach his team to do the same thing. Um, sent him a proposal on Friday. 
He then opened it on Monday night at 8.37 p.m. He spent six minutes in there and my smart link told me exactly what pages he spent time on. So I know that he's already opened my proposal. If he then forwards that onto someone else in the organization, say the person who's gonna be signing it off, I will see that that's happened. So a smart link allows me to see what's happening with my sales proposals. That's one of the reasons why I love them. It helps you to move your profile viewers into your sales funnel. I have smart links on my profile. If someone comes to my profile and clicks on a smart link, I know that they've done that. So it helps me to generate leads. Um, and they're absolutely amazing. So I have one for my sales staff masterclasses. I have proposals, different things in there, right? So I have probably about 20 different smart links right now. This is what they look like inside. So you can have PDFs, you can have videos, you can have links to book a call. Like you can literally fill it with whatever you want to fill it. So a smart link is a link into lots more things. So typically I'll have like a PDF or a PowerPoint document for the people that want the detail. I usually have something highly valuable, a link to a YouTube video or something like that. Um, and I've got the option there for people to move to the next stage. You can see here, um, you then get to see who's accessed it for how long and what they spent time on. So this person here accessed it for 10 minutes. Uh, they looked at the replay of one of these. Um, and they went to the PDF for 10 minutes. Now, anyone that spends more than 30 seconds in one of my smart links is getting a follow up from me. Um, and I've done that this week with a couple and they're now watching videos and we're having conversations and we're booking meetings. But the thing I love is down here, right? I can see like what page and how long they spent time on. So if I've sent a sales proposal to someone and my quotes and my options are on, let's say page 27, page 28, page 29, I already know of the three options, which one they're most likely to go for because they've spent the most time on that particular page. Like, how cool is that to know as a salesperson? You know they've opened it, they're not ghosting you, you know who else is looking at it and you know what they're spending time on. Like smart links are just insanely brilliant. So when it comes to pipeline, it's all about the habits, right? It's all about the system to get that consistency of leads. So your system composed is composed of three things, your daily habits, your weekly habits and your monthly habits. And when I work with organizations or when I work with individuals and when I run masterclasses, like this is the key thing, wrapping it all up at the end. It's all about giving you the daily, weekly and monthly habits that are gonna make the biggest difference. Now, in terms of um, the things that you need to learn, this is my eight social selling strategies. These are the things that everybody needs to learn, the eight Ps. But if you think about all of the different things that kind of compose of all of this, these are all of the different and elements that you need to learn in order to make that system work. So it's not just about having a decent profile. It's not just about sending some messages. Like all of these things contribute to you having a system that allows you to actually win business and get results. This is the system that's generated 164 million pounds plus for the clients that have learned this system. So you've got to learn all those things, but then it's got to be wrapped around into a system. Now, I do believe that your daily, weekly, and monthly habits can be done in less than an hour a day. Like you're in sales, you're running a business, whatever it is that you're doing in your day-to-day, -day, it's really, really important that you have a system that's time efficient, right? So I teach a, sell a social selling system, which is daily, weekly, monthly habits for less than an hour a day. Then you can get on with the rest of your business, right? You can get on with your meetings, you can get on with whatever else you've got to do, but you don't need to spend hours and hours and hours on LinkedIn every single day in order to get results. If you're spending more than an hour a day, you're wasting time and you're doing things inefficiently. And pipeline, when you have a system, it changes everything. So we've heard from Matt, we've heard from Torben. You're now gonna hear from one more person. This is Reshma. Now Reshma is a salesperson in an organization with 513 sales navigator licenses. Like that is a huge, huge investment for that company. And uh, you'll be shocked in a minute to hear how she was told to use Sales Navigator. Um, she self-funded herself through my Sales Navigator Masterclass. Um, she just moved into sales from having gone through customer success. She's been at the organization for quite a while. So here's what she had to say about pipeline and systems. Yeah, so for me, it's it's open, it's opened up the tool because I'd never used it before. I never knew there was so much there that could, that could help me in my new role. Um, consistency is key. And what I'm taking away from that is getting getting into those those habits of of doing that prospecting on a daily, weekly basis, um, and coming up with content. So I again, like Carl, thought that you had to you had to be a certain type of person 
to create it. Everything that I've created so far has either been something that I've picked up from marketing or something that's really, really personal. But I can actually melt the two together to make a point. And that's that's what I'm learning. And as Daniel said, that smart links um, feature, I think, will be really useful for me um, to understand, you know, who is interacting and how I can leverage that aspect of social selling. Because I don't think I don't think as an organization that I work for use it very well. There has been zero training on my onboarding around Sales Navigator, apart from these are accounts, these are leads, go find them. That's it. Create a list, put it into outreach and send, create some sequences. And I'm still trying to I'm still trying to figure that out. But that's why I invested in myself to come on this course to give myself that edge because I am brand new. I don't I don't have that experience that other salespeople have. So this has been, a, for me, a masterclass in, in how to use it. Honestly, it's been brilliant. So Reshma and I are working one-to-one -one now and I'm coaching her. She's actually, um, she's only been in her sales role for like three months. She's landed her first two deals last week. Um, she's already 60% towards her Q1 target. And, you know, LinkedIn has been a massive part of that. Her personal brand on LinkedIn is massively um, increasing. Like she's, she's, she had hardly any connection. She was never posting. Um, and I absolutely love her. But imagine that her company has 513 restaurants like in their organization. And they are just literally saying, here's sales navigator, here's account, here's leads, just get on with it. Like that's not uncommon. That's a huge investment for an organization. Imagine if every single one of those people actually knew how to use Sales Navigator and LinkedIn. Yeah. So we've covered all three areas of the workshop now. So we've looked at positioning, setting yourself up for success, building an effective profile, creating a personal brand. We've talked about prospecting and how you can leverage the tools that Sales Navigator gives you to find and approach and target your ideal client. And of course, we've talked about the importance of having that system in place. Um, now, I did say at the very beginning that I had three um, outcomes for today. One was to give you as much knowledge and advice as I can. So have you found what I've shared with you useful today? So type yes for me if you found uh, today useful, if you've learned something. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, and I said that I would share with you at the end an opportunity in terms of how you can learn more about how to work with me. Um, so I'm going to do that just now. It'll take a couple of minutes and then I'm going to move into Q&A. So we're doing all right for time at the moment. So we'll have probably about 15 minutes left for questions if you have them. Um, so I'm glad that you'll fight. Hell yes, I love it. Thanks, Ben. Um, so let's go on to talk about the opportunity. So obviously I do deliver masterclasses on all of this. It's deep dive, sales navigator, LinkedIn, social selling. OK, um, it's either in person or online. So my public courses are online. So if you're a salesperson, uh, an individual, maybe a business owner that wants to book on one of those. Um, so I do those. If you are a larger organization, you're a sales leader, you've got a bigger team. I do those either in-house or online as well, but I do deliver these deep dive masterclasses. Now there are gonna be two types of people. I do have a Sales Navigator Masterclass coming up on the 18th of April. It's for six weeks, 90 minutes a week of training. Uh, I've only got eight places left on that particular course. And if you're a large organization, I do tailored um, kind of bespoke Sales Navigator Masterclasses. That is application only. Um, now, if you are one of the people that is looking for one of those places, the next course is on the 18th of April at 600 pounds for the full course plus VAT. Now the closing date for applications is next Friday, right? So at 12 o'clock next Friday, 12 noon UK time, the um, that bookings will close. So if you do wanna grab one of those last eight places, you do need to um, apply. Now it is application only. Um, I am gonna open up my diary to have 10 calls only with people that are online. We've got we've got had over like 150 people register for today. Um, so if you want to book a call with me, it's about getting to know you and your business making sure that the masterclass is right for you because it's not right for everyone. I want those eight places left filled with people that are actually going to take action and actually really want to take their social selling to the next level. So we'll talk about how you can secure, secure your place. Um, now, there are only 10 calls available. First come, first serve, so you'll need to be quick. Um, I'm going to pop the link into the chat box there. It's pipeline44.com forward slash sales nav. That will give you a link to my diary. Um, I think there are about 30 slots available between now and the end of next week. So if you want one of those places, you do need to book a call to have a chat with me first. 
Um, so, um, but I am only doing 10 calls, but you'll see about 30 available time slots is what I'm saying. So pipeline44.com forward slash sales. Now, whether you're a big company or an individual, it starts with us having a conversation, right? Um, you're going to learn this system. Obviously, you're going to get all of this in those uh, in that masterclass, whether you're doing it online or in person. Uh, we're going to cover absolutely everything I know. I've probably given you maybe 2% of my brain about LinkedIn social selling um, here. So um, if you think about everything that you're going to learn, like this is this today has been probably 2 to 5% of everything that you're going to learn. So, um, So here we go. This is the system you're going to learn. You're going to get the daily habits, the weekly habits, and the monthly habits. As I say, there's only 10 calls available. I know I can see some of them have already gone. So pardmain44.com forward slash sales nav. So that is the end of today's workshop. If you do want to jump off at this point, you can. If you want to stay for Q&A, I will be here until one o'clock UK time. So we've got exactly 15 minutes left for questions. You can use the Q&A box um, in the webinar here. So I can see I've already got some questions. So I'm just going to stop sharing just my screen just there. Um, right, let's have a look. Um, John asked, will it be recorded and sent out after the session? Yes, it will be. So um, I am going to get this sent out to everybody who registered. Um, so if you, if I, I know I speak quite quickly. So if you missed something or you had to take a call or you had a child running into the room or a dog or whatever, um, you will be able to get the recording, yes. Graham, um, insights is insights a paid extra thing? Uh, okay, so in, LinkedIn insights, which is where you can get information on companies, is not extra. There is a different um, there is a different tool, like a data uh, insights tool that LinkedIn also sells, in addition to Sales Navigator, which is extra. But the insights I was talking about is the insights you can get about the companies. Um, there is a data. Um, sales is called sales insights that's not the thing I was talking about I was talking about how you can get insights inside LinkedIn um Lisa you've said is there a best time to post um so is there a best time to post if you do a good post it doesn't matter what time of day it is right it will fly if it's a post that's got lots of emotion it's got human connection it's got a good story it's got a good hook all those things it will do well regardless of the time of day however from what we're seeing there are a few times of day that can work better than others but again you'd have to test and measure this for yourself so we would recommend kind of first thing in the morning kind of between seven and kind of nine seven nine thirty in the morning that's when people are typically grabbing their phones and uh, jumping onto something like linkedin that's when people are commuting etc um, then towards the evening, right? Think about why people are on LinkedIn. They're usually there because they're either bored and are procrastinating, or they are there because they want to get business. But 90% of the time they're bored and they're looking for entertainment. So they're scrolling their newsfeed. So um, evenings can do quite well, as well as weekends, to be fair. So think about, but always test and measure for your own target market, okay? So you want to be able to babysit a post when it goes up. You don't want to post and ghost. You want to put a post up and stay on it for one to two hours to keep the engagement happening, which means if someone's commenting on the post, you need to comment back. That's what will drive the algorithm to put more eyeballs and more impressions on that post. So don't post something and then run off to the school run or post something and then go and go to sleep. Right. You want to make sure that you're looking after that post. That's why I'm not a big fan of scheduling posts, because if you schedule posts ahead of time, you don't remember when you have scheduled them. Therefore, you can't then interact with that post once it goes out. So it's important that you're thinking about what's the best time for your target market. Um, you know, some of you might be targeting entrepreneurs, some of you might be targeting corporates. So again, test and measure for yourself, track it over 90 days and see which are the best times for you to post. Um, let's have a look at the other ones here. So, yes, yeah, so John, you've said, is there a way for Sales Navigator to target startups? Yeah, absolutely. So you can, um, you can use Sales Navigator to see how long somebody's been in their position. Um, you can use it to see um, like how many employees people have, et cetera. So if you've got a startup, most of the time they don't have a lot of employees. They usually put themselves on LinkedIn as self-employed or like one person in their business. Um, and you can you can use it to find that information. Um, the how long they've been in their role or how long they've been in their industry normally gives you an insight. There are definitely ways to do it. It's a bit intricate to do it, John, but it, it so I know you've said like you've tried doing different combinations and things like that, but it, 
but there are ways around it, right? So you can target startups 100%. We do it in our business, right? So for our academy, which is another product that we offer, we do target micro business and startup businesses. And there are ways to do it because we do it for ourselves. Aaron, 40% connection rate. Um, yeah, so the first one, Aaron, is about just people accepting your connection. The second one is about how many people then go into like a positive conversation, right? So um, it's not a huge drop off. If you think about things like, um, you know, picking up the phone, if you're going to prospect 100 people, you're not going to get hold of every single person and, and move every single person to a meeting. That three, three to six percent I was talking about is where you're moving it to a positive next step. Um, so, but for certain campaigns, like an event campaign, it will be up at 10, 15%. Um, it just depends on the type of campaign that you're going to choose and what type of prospecting you're going to be doing. Um, there we go, what's alive? Graham, uh, never heard of smart links. Where can I find them? So Graham, in, in Sales Navigator, if you're on the core version of Sales Navigator, you won't see them. Um, you need to be on either the advanced or the advanced team enterprise edition of them. Otherwise, you won't find them. OK, um, there we go. So how whilst on holiday, can, I can schedule posts, but how do I babysit them? Yeah, you can schedule them, Linda, as in they can go out. But unless you actually physically go onto the post, you can't babysit them. Um, you just have to for the ones that are on holiday, just come back. When you come back from holiday, just go back over all the comments. Um, it doesn't mean the post is going to completely tank, but it will just reignite when you get back and you start making those comments back on the other ones. So, OK. Um, let's have a look. It's done. Oh, yeah. So someone said, when you look at a profile below the headline where it says talks about with hashtags, can we change these or is this what LinkedIn picks up from hashtags in posts? Right. You can change it. That is um, what's called creator mode. So when you switch creator mode to on on your profile and you have creator mode switched on, you will then be able to choose five hashtags that you, or topics that you talk about regularly. So you can choose those five things that it has at the top of your profile that you talk about. So on your LinkedIn profile, go to um, go to the dashboard and you'll see um, resources. And in there you can change creator mode to on and that will allow you to make changes to those five hashtags. So that's where you find that one. Um, it's done. Uh, Mitesh, you said, should you use the paid sponsored post thingy? Um, I would not recommend paying for boosting posts on LinkedIn. Um, they are expensive, not very targeted. And I don't know any business so far in all my 13 years of doing this that is making paid or boosted ads work. Um, now, I am an organic reach expert on LinkedIn. I'm not a paid ads expert on LinkedIn. But I do know lots of companies that have tried and failed um, in that regard. So I wouldn't be investing your money in, in boosting posts. I'd be investing in learning how to make the organic and free side of LinkedIn work for you. Um, so I definitely don't recommend the boosting or sponsoring ads thing. And uh, Nanjil, you said, is the post engagement, will it influence our business to a potential client? So engagement's um, very key to your success on LinkedIn. So engagement is when you're commenting and getting visible on other people's posts and your own posts. So you can get business and get influence and visibility and credibility with your potential prospects. So you could build a list of, say, 400 people in Sales Navigator who are all your ideal client. And then on the news feed on Sales Navigator, you'll have all these posts from the people that you um, that you are kind of saved and you'll be able to interact with their posts. So we had a client do this recently and she won a really big contract. So she's a CEO mentor, this client I'm talking about. She went onto the post of a big CEO from a very large UK company. She put a very insightful comment against his post, quite insightful, a couple of paragraphs of information. So first thing that happens is the person who created the original post sees her comment. But secondly, everybody else on the post that's already liked or commented also sees that comment because they get notified about it. Now, if you are to engage and comment on other people's posts and get visible on their posts, sometimes that can lead to then an inbox conversation that happens or a discussion underneath the post or both. In this particular situation, a discussion, discussion ensued underneath the post and an inbox conversation happened where she then got to have a conversation with this top CEO he then got interested in talking to her. They booked a meeting and she be he became a client of hers. 
So engagement can, um, can definitely get you visibility and can help to build your credibility. In fact, I would be putting as much emphasis on engagement as I am on creating content right now. It is one of the top, top ways for you to gain influence and gain influence with potential prospects um, as well as posting content because your content isn't necessarily going to be seen by every single prospect in your network, but you can get visible. You can ring the bell on people's profiles if you want to see their posts. You know, you can use Sales Navigator newsfeed for being alerted about things that they posted and then engage on those posts. So definitely engagement will influence um, the prospects for sure. Let's have a look. They're all done. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Is it useful to repost content? Um, if I were given a choice, I wouldn't be reposting content unless you're like really strapped for time. LinkedIn rewards original content creators. So yes, you can repost something. You can repost something on the company page. You can repost someone else's content, but you're never going to win a lot of visibility or credibility off the back of doing that. If you are going to repost, use at least 200 um, characters when you repost and use different hashtags to the original post if you want it to get any kind of traction. But um, I, would, I wouldn't say it's useful as such. It's just a good time saver if you don't have the ability to post that day. I would be posting somewhere between three and five times a week. Um, you don't need to post three, five times a day on LinkedIn. You can post a minimum three times a week would be enough. Um, but to get more and more visibility, I would be increasing it to more like kind of five to seven. But if you're starting out, then post three times a week and then engage every single day, engage every single day. Um, but reposting, I'm not a big fan. Um, Sean Mallon, you've said, should I remove irrelevant contacts from all job roles? Would this improve scoring by making contacts relevant to my industry? Now, I, first off, I would not recommend you um, removing your contacts few reasons right so although they're not necessarily the ideal prospect for you right now as in they're not the ideal client chances are within their network in their second degree network you're probably going to find that they have got the ideal client for you right now so by culling them you're getting rid of potential opportunity um, in terms of second degree network when you add people into your first degree network, you're not just adding one person, you're adding like them plus lots of people. So Sean, I'm not sure if you and I are connected, I think we are, but if we weren't, um, when you add Sam Rattling into your network, you're adding 25 something, 25,000 connections. So my 25,000 connections come into your second degree network. So by getting rid of someone like me, you're removing 25,000 connections from your network that could be potential customers for you. Um, so I wouldn't be removing them. It's not going to make a massive difference to your SSI score in terms of the industry. So it's not going to shift your SSI score enough to do that. It'd be more detrimental to remove them than it would be to keep them. So I would keep them and I would then search, use Sales Navigator to search the second degree network to find people in their networks that are good for you. My goodness, lots of questions. Uh, that one's done. Uh, Mia, you said, what is the difference sending second messages to contact from LinkedIn or from Sales Navigator? So there is a way to send messages, the second message through Sales Navigator without it looking like an in-mail and without it, um, you know, coming across the wrong way. So when you're prospecting in Sales Nav, it all stays in Sales Navigator. It keeps completely separate from your normal LinkedIn inbox. So you want to make sure that you're sending your connection requests from Sales Navigator and then on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, going back over those new connections and sending your second message directly from Sales Navigator. So it doesn't make a difference necessarily, but I would I prefer to keep all my prospecting efforts over in Sales Nav. And then I, it doesn't get all confused with my normal inbox, which is kind of really busy. Um, so you want to be able to send your second messages and your connection requests inside Sales Navigator. I think that's the answer to your question, Mia. But if I need clarification on that, then just let me know. Uh, let's have a look. I think we are almost done. Wow. Right. Before we go, everybody, I want you just to share. We've got two minutes left. I want you to share uh, one big thing that you're going to do differently off the back of seeing today's webinar. So what one big action are you going to take um, off the back of today's session? I'm going to get you to be able to see everybody's comments. So what things are you going to do differently? Uh, whilst you're doing that, I'll pop the, I know we've there are about eight calls gone, I think. So there's a couple of calls left. So I'm just going to pop the link for that. Get my horse in the kill. 
pipe544.com forward slash sales now. So there we go. Engage, engage, engage. Love it. Awesome. Meet with me next week. Yes, Errol, if you booked a call, I love it. Super awesome. Remove sales tags from my profile. Great, Mark. That will be a big, big help for you. Amazing. Don't look like a salesperson. Um, love that. What else? I know you guys are probably typing at the moment. So thank you for staying on, everyone. I'm super excited to see how many of you are left. So that's a very, very good thing. Um, we're almost on the hour. So I even stuck to time as well. How about that? <laughs> Right, very good, everybody. I'm going to finish up now. So uh, you said, Graham, for great sessions. See you in a couple of weeks. Perfect. Amazing, everyone. Have a fantastic weekend. Um, I am super happy that you even showed up because it's end of end of quarter for a lot of you, I know. Um, push, push, push. Go build that pipeline on Sales Navigator and or LinkedIn. Hopefully you found it useful. I'm Sam Rathling. And if you're not LinkedIn, you're totally linked out. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.